So last, um, last week we heard from Frank and, and John, and it really struck me how God has been really um, guiding us with what we've been hearing and leading us through getting to know the Holy Spirit. And I, I, last week, was I drumming? I think I was drumming. Yes, I was drumming. And I was sat there and I just felt God ask me this week to just rest, just ease back. And let's just, instead of learning more about the Holy Spirit, my heart is to introduce you to the Holy Spirit this week. Usually when I speak, I like to introduce people to Jesus. That's, that's my heart, is to, to bring us closer to him. But I really felt God want me to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. It's funny, Andrew has been saying, the last couple of times he's been speaking, he's been saying, so I have my notes and I really felt God tell me to get rid of my notes and just speak. And I joked to John, I was like, John, I'd love to do that. And then this week I've been trying to prepare. <laughs> Nothing's happened. So, <laughs> so I have John 14, and I, I, I felt God want me to read John 14 to you. I'm actually going to read the whole thing. So I timed it to make sure I wouldn't like, take too long. It's about 4 minutes 30, so you have to bear with me. But um, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to just go back through it. And I'm just going to stop at places where I felt God stop me. And just take our time and work through it. But at the end of today, um, I really felt like God is leading us towards a time of ministry. And I know that when there's been ministry before, we're, we're not, um, we don't run forwards, let's put it that way. But I, I just really um, ask you just to think during this morning, it's not just all about coming up for healing. The Holy Spirit wants to touch us. He wants to touch our lives. He wants to fill us. He wants to impact our lives. If you have he need for healing, come forward. But if you're trusting God for anything, that invitation is there this morning. If you're trusting for a loved one to be saved and you want someone to stand with you, if you're trusting God for a job, or if you just want, and I say just, but the Holy Spirit to fill you freshly today, so at the end, I'm going to ask the worship team just to sing a couple of songs, and then there'll be people here to pray. And just come forward. Don't worry about anything else. Just come forward. The Holy Spirit wants to touch us today. So I'm going to read John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Remember, Jesus is speaking to us these words. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? These words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does these works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, 
whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live and you live also. At that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him and said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, for the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I did... I did think of cutting that shorter, but every time I did that, God really just wanted me to read the whole thing. And I love how he led me to stop at verse 27 I stopped at, which finishes, let not your heart be troubled. And John 14 starts with, let not your heart be troubled. Because God is with us, we can let our hearts not be troubled. So the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I know that I have found, because I don't know much about the Holy Spirit, I feel like it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because I'm not sure what to do at that point, and I'm not sure how to relate to the Holy Spirit. And it's almost like sometimes we can come to the Holy Spirit when we're trusting God for a miracle, or when we want to see something happen or move. Or, but actually, the Holy Spirit is God with us. Remember, Jesus is sat at the right hand of the Father in heaven, And the Holy Spirit is God with us. He's the one we rely on every day. The Bible says that he teaches us and he guides us and he leads us. Those promptings that we feel or those when we read the Bible and the words jump out at us, that's the Holy Spirit. He's the one who who teaches us all things. The Bible says who brings to our remembrance everything that Jesus has said. So the the Hebrew word, and you probably know this, is, is ruach for Holy Spirit, well, for spirit, but ruach, which is breath. But it's interesting, it's not just breath, it is the power that is made by the breath or the wind. So it's not the act itself, it's the power that's produced. So if I blow a candle out, that power that blew the candle out, that's the ruach. I remember that, interestingly, just one side thing, that. Um, in Genesis 1, when the Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth, that word hovering is only three times in the Bible, um, in the Old Testament. And in Deuteronomy, it's referred to an eagle hovering over its chicks, protecting and looking after them. And that's a beautiful picture of the Holy Spirit. So we want to experience the breath of God. The Father spoke the word, which is Christ, which is carried on the breath, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings Christ to us. He reveals Jesus to us. And Jesus says that he who has seen him has seen the Father. So the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us, who reveals the Father to us. And it's so important as we look at the Holy Spirit that we are reminded and we remember the Trinity, the Godhead. Oftentimes, I found myself back away from that because I don't understand. And it's one of those mysteries that we like to try and put words to. There's all sorts of um, interesting pictures I've heard people say, like an egg or like ice and water and things. But actually, the Trinity is so much more. And it's the power of God working, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, so intimately and so amazingly in our lives that we can't separate the three. So I wanted us to look this morning at the Trinity. John 14, um, verse 5 and 6. 
It says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's one of my favorite verses. Oh, Bob's skipping ahead. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. But when I was preparing and just reading John 14, God just showed me something that I'd not seen, and maybe you've seen it, but I had not seen it. And I looked it up in the complete Jewish Bible, and it reads this. It says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Remember in Exodus, when God said to Moses, I am who I am. And in the Bible, we don't have it in our English Bibles, but there are, are times where I am in capital letters pops up. And this is one of them. You can see there, it says, I am in capital letters. At this point, I believe God was showing me that Jesus was revealing the Trinity. Because we see in John 14 that it says the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. And we see in John 5 that the life is in the Father, and the Father gave life to the Son who can give life. So Jesus is the way. And then there's the Spirit of truth, and the Father gives life. I am, the great I am, is the way, the truth, and the life. It's beautiful how Jesus is talking, but then he suddenly involves the whole Godhead, the way, the truth, and the life. In Hebrew, the number three, we look at the Trinity. The number three is a beautiful number. It's divine wholeness and completeness and perfection. So within the Trinity, within the Godhead, is perfection and wholeness. Then it says, if you had known me, you'd, you would have known my Father. And from now on you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, yet you have not known me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And he goes on to say, I am in the Father. You are in me, and I in you. So beautiful. We are so enveloped into the Godhead. I was thinking it through, and in one part, and I couldn't find it, but it says that Jesus sends us his Spirit. So then I got my kind of human head on, and I was like, how can Jesus' spirit be sent? Because doesn't it need to be in Jesus? This is how I think. So I got, I got confused, and then I remembered that we are the body of Christ. It wasn't so much that his spirit went out, but we were brought in. We are the body of Christ. We are one with him. We are his hands, his feet. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We have the spirit of Christ. It's beautiful. We've been brought in to God. He hasn't come out to us. We are now members of his body. We're not church members. We are literally the body of Christ. We have his spirit. It goes on and he says, um, later on he says, if you keep my commandments... I will, um, you love me if you keep my commandments. You know, holy living, that, that kind of makes me feel like I have to like double up my efforts because I, I need to live holy to prove that I love Jesus. That's works. So we're trying in our own efforts to live right and to do everything right to show that we do love Jesus. If, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But there's a scripture in the Passion Translation Bob, do we have that one, sorry? Because um, I, I kind of got it, but I didn't know how to word it, and I looked it up in the Passion. It says, Jesus replied, loving me empowers you to obey my word. And my Father will love you so deeply that we will come to you and make our dwelling place, make you our dwelling place. It's not, if you love me, you will keep my commands. It's because we love him, because he's in our lives, he empowers us then to keep his word. It's his work in us, and that's the Holy Spirit's work in us. We don't need to live right to prove that we love God and love Jesus. Actually, the more we're in relationship with Jesus, 
the more the Holy Spirit draws us into that relationship, revealing Jesus to us, the more we'll hate those things. Those things that once drew us in the world will no longer draw us anymore. I remember when I became a Christian, I don't know if many of you know this, I was very rebellious when I became a Christian. And the, the first day I walked into church, I was a goth. So <laughs> I had black clothes, black makeup, black everything. Hang on. Um, but no, I was, I was a proper goth. And I walked into church, and at that point it was, Lord, if, because I, I was suffering from depression, I was like, Lord, no one can help me. God, if you are real, you can help me. That was my kind of bargaining thing. If you're real, prove it almost. That day I got saved. And I, I, was, um, I was smoking. I was an alcoholic. I was smoking other things too. And within two weeks, I had stopped drinking alcohol. I had stopped smoking. I'd stopped smoking other stuff too. And it wasn't that I tried, because to be honest, I quite enjoyed those things. That was where I was at. However, Jesus touched my heart. That day I got saved. And it wasn't any kind of big light, lightning moment. I just said, if you're real. And I prayed the prayer with some people. And for me, I kind of, that was it. I'll wait and see. But without even realizing, I smoked less and less and less until one day I was like, threw the tobacco away. And I drank less and less and less until one day I was like, I don't even want this. It wasn't, I didn't pray hard, Lord, help me. And, and sometimes we do, we have to trust God for those things. But for me, it was just that I realized God loved me. Where everyone else had failed me, God stepped up and proved that he loved me. And that saving grace empowered me to move away from those things. And it's not that we get saved and then we never slip up and we never get stuff wrong. It's a continual daily walk, but remember when we take communion, we are washed with the blood of Jesus. It's a continual washing. Every day I mess up. Every day I go, oh, why did I do that? But it's a continual washing of the blood. I did, sometimes I used to back along, I'd, be, I'd mess up, I was like, oh Lord, please forgive me. And in that pleading for forgiveness, I lost sight that I was already forgiven. Now, it doesn't make sin okay. That's not what this is saying. What it is saying is that we are already forgiven. And in that revelation of our forgiveness, and in that revelation of how much it costs Jesus to forgive us, that empowers us to walk away. And when we're still in the midst of the stuff we're doing wrong, we can still declare, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit witnesses with our spirit. He doesn't tell us where we're messing up. He tells us that we are children of God. That's the witness of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't wag a finger and say, you got this wrong today and you did this wrong. He draws alongside us and just goes, remember, you're a child of God. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's who he is for us. So that was all good. But that is the, the reality of the saving grace of God in our lives. Salvation is Christ. So many times we can hear, be saved, you know, you, you, know, you need to go to heaven. Actually, no, what we need is a relationship with Jesus. And heaven is there for us. Heaven is the, a beautiful blessing that's given to us. But our salvation is Jesus. When I married John, he could have promised me the world. He could have promised me a massive big house, lots of money, adventures, holidays. I still would have married him because I wanted to spend my life with him. That's why I married him. And we are the bride of Christ. That's what he calls us. So we're not getting saved so that we can go to heaven. We are saved so that we can be in relationship with Jesus. And the one who empowers that relationship is the Holy Spirit. We need him to draw us to Jesus. It says that he reminds us of everything that Jesus has said. And sometimes we can read the Bible and it feels like nothing's going in. And we're reading and we're reading and it feels like God's not speaking and we just carry on reading. And yet 
sometimes we can be walking along the street and the Holy Spirit will just bring to remembrance something that we've read. Remember that the Word is Christ. So the more we read, the more we give the Holy Spirit room to work in our lives. Even if it feels like you're just reading words on a page, keep reading because the Holy Spirit will do the work. I don't know what I'm reading now, but the result of of the Holy Spirit in our life, though, is that he will give us power. Acts 1 says this. And I looked it up in the Strong's Concordance, and power is strength power. It's proper power power, ability, inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. And I stopped there, and I thought, actually, because we are born-again Christians, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, it's now our nature to have that power. The Holy Spirit is that ruah. It's the, the effect of the wind, the breath of God Almighty, the one who spoke the universe into being. He's the one who is in us. Power for performing miracles moral power and excellence of soul. God gives us that ability to live right. The power and influence which belong to riches and wealth. God gives us a good standing in life. We are citizens of heaven. Power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces and hosts. Remember, we're not stood alone. We're not alone trying to do this. The whole of heaven is cheering us on. The whole of heaven wants to see God's kingdom advance and grow and impact and touch the world and help people. And in John 14, we see that God says he will give us another comforter, one like him. It's the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ. And we've seen John's taught us about um, the ship that comes alongside and guides us in. And I looked it up in Strong's again, and it's another comforter is summoned, called to one's side, especially called to one's aid. When you're messing up, actually, you qualify for God's grace even more. We don't need grace when we're doing everything well. We need grace when we're really not doing well. And actually, God's grace is sufficient. You can never outdo God's grace. I've made some humongous mess ups and it will never outdo God's grace. I am so sorry for the things I've done but I'm so thankful for the forgiveness that God has poured out upon me because he loves me. I am in Christ. Carolyn actually um, years ago she had a picture that stuck with me forever. She said that when you fall over you don't fall over and fall outside of the kingdom of God. You fall over inside the kingdom of God. We just trip up. God helps us to our feet again and we carry on walking. We don't suddenly fall out of the kingdom. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So the comforter that Jesus sends is one who pleads another's cause before a judge, a pleader, a counsel for defense, legal assistant, an advocate, one who pleads another's cause with one, an intercessor. And this is something I had overlooked. I had always um, believed that Jesus is there interceding for me, which he is. The Bible is clear on that. There's this beautiful scripture in Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit is also interceding. How amazing. We have two interceding before the Father for us. I don't know if you've had times where you've been praying and all that comes out is a grunt (laughs) because we just don't have the words. Words just fail and we just sit there before God and it's like, "Mm, (laughs) let that be okay. Know that the Spirit is interceding for you. Sometimes when we pray in tongues, we just know that the Spirit is interceding for us. But it's those times where we sit and words fail us. And the Holy Spirit is there. He intercedes for us. 
Words that cannot be uttered, the Spirit utters on our behalf. God's love is so immeasurably great, more than we understand. We sometimes get familiar with Scripture, or we can, I don't know, the longer we're a Christian, the, the, we, we've seen it. We've seen that happen. We've trusted God for this. And it becomes part of our lifestyle, I guess. But I want us to remember the, the reality, the power, the goodness, the love of God, which is real and alive in us through the Holy Spirit. He's so integral to our lives and one that isn't Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because we don't quite know what to do there. He's God with us, in us. Imagine God in us and we in Christ, in God. The Bible says we're hidden with Christ in God. We're so surrounded and inside us with God that we are children of God. <laughs> there is, there's no way we can ever not be children of God. I reassure you that no matter what you're facing, you're facing it with Jesus by your side. So as we lead into this time of ministry, I just, I was reminded of when Jesus was born. So at the beginning, in Genesis, when God created the heavens and the earth, God spoke the word, and the spirit hovered, and because of the word, things happened. Universe, stars, immeasurable beauty, and plants, and world, and light, and can you imagine what that must have looked like, all bursting forth, the sounds and the smells all coming to life? And, and God's plan with man, he made man, and man was the pinnacle of that creation. We wonder at the stars, we marvel at them, and we see the beauty in flowers and nature. But actually, God saw us, and he saw his creation was very good. We were the pinnacle, the, the absolute beauty of his creation. Then the fall and what have you, and we found ourselves in this terrible place. And Jesus didn't want to leave us there. So he left earth and came down to be with us. God walked among us. And can you imagine, I was just kind of imagining, let my mind wonder, the excitement and the, the joy Jesus must have felt when he could place his hand, he became flesh, place his hand on someone's shoulder and heal them, feeling their, their, their skin, their body. I was thinking of the leper, how everyone must, like, they would be like, don't breathe the air, don't go near him. They would warn the leper, get away. And Jesus is like, it's okay. And they're like, but Lord, you'll become unclean if you touch him. But Jesus touched the leper. Imagine that leper had not been touched for years. No physical contact. Shunned, no family, no contact at all. And Jesus touched him. And it must have brought Jesus so much joy, God being able to interact with us that intimately. And this morning, the Holy Spirit is here with us. John 14 says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Remember the works that Jesus did. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I know I've read that before, and I've thought, but Lord, I've, I've prayed for this, and I've not seen it happen. And... Sometimes we don't see things happen straight away, but what I do know is that, that he who promised is faithful. The God of the universe is faithful. The Holy Spirit who is in you is faithful. And Jesus said these works he will do and greater also because I go to my Father. Because Jesus went to the Father, he sent us the Holy Spirit. These things are possible because of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus went up to be with the Father and sent us another helper, another counselor, these things are possible. So don't give up today. If there's something you've been trusting God for ages, keep trusting, keep believing. 
God is God, God of the universe, God of angel armies. God is here right now with us.